Welcome back to our channel. We hope you'll find valuable content here. If you enjoy our channel, please remember to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more. Let's dive in. Episode 1, Introduction to Negotiation. Welcome to the MBA Business School Program channel. In this first episode, we're diving into the exciting world of negotiation. Whether you're a seasoned professional or just starting in the business world, understanding negotiation is crucial. So, let's get started by exploring the basics. Why Negotiation Matters Negotiation, simply put, is a fancy word for a conversation or discussion aimed at reaching an agreement. We negotiate all the time, whether it's deciding where to go for dinner with friends or striking a multi-million dollar business deal. It's a functional skill you need, and here's why it's so important. Negotiation in everyday life. Think about it. When you and your friends can't decide on a movie to watch or a restaurant to dine at, you negotiate. You weigh different options, consider preferences, and eventually reach a decision that works for everyone. This everyday negotiation sets the stage for what happens in the business world. Negotiation in Business Negotiation is a fundamental skill in the business world. Whether you're sealing a deal, resolving conflicts, or making strategic decisions, negotiation is at the heart of it all. It's the art of reaching agreements between parties with differing interests and finding common ground. Think of it as a powerful tool for achieving your goals and ensuring mutual success. Key Negotiation Concepts BATNA, Best Alternative to a Negotiated Agreement This is your Plan B. It's the alternative you have if the negotiation doesn't lead to a satisfactory outcome. Knowing your BATNA helps you assess the value of the current deal on the table. Example, imagine you're negotiating a salary raise. Your BATNA might be exploring job opportunities elsewhere or pursuing additional education to enhance your skills. ZOPA, Zone of Possible Agreement This is the overlap between what you want and what the other party is willing to offer. The ZOPA is where successful negotiations take place. Example, you want a 10% raise, and your employer is willing to offer up to 12%. The ZOPA is between 10% and 12%. Reservation point, this is your bottom line, the least favorable outcome you are willing to accept before walking away from the negotiation. Example, your reservation point in a car purchase might be $20,000. If the seller can't meet that price, you won't buy the car. Negotiation styles, there are various negotiation styles, from competitive, win-lose, to collaborative, win-win. Your choice of style depends on the situation and your goals. Example, if you're negotiating a contract with a long-term business partner, a collaborative approach is usually more beneficial. But if you're haggling with a street vendor, a competitive style might work better. Interests versus positions it's crucial to distinguish between what someone says they want, positions, and the underlying reasons they want it, interests. Effective negotiators focus on addressing interests to find creative solutions. Example, in a business partnership negotiation, one party may insist on a higher share of profits, position. Their underlying interest might be financial security for their family. Understanding these basic concepts is the first step to becoming a skilled negotiator. Negotiation is not about winning at all costs, but about creating value and building relationships. In the upcoming episodes, we'll delve deeper into negotiation styles, strategies, and practical tips to help you become a negotiation pro. So, stay tuned and get ready to unlock your negotiation potential. Episode 2, Negotiation Styles and Strategies Welcome back to the MBA Business School Program channel. In our previous episode, we introduced you to the fascinating world of negotiation and its importance. Today, we're going to delve deeper into the various negotiation styles and strategies that can help you navigate the complex landscape of business negotiations. Negotiation Styles Negotiation styles are like different tools in your negotiation toolbox. 
Depending on the situation, you'll want to choose the right tool for the job. Here are some common negotiation styles. Competitive, win-lose This style is like a game of chess, where you aim to outmaneuver your opponent and win at their expense. It can be useful in situations where you have a clear advantage or limited resources to share. Example, when buying a car from a dealership, you may adopt a competitive style to negotiate a lower price. Collaborative, win-win collaboration is all about finding mutually beneficial solutions. In this style, both parties work together to create value and achieve their goals. Example, when forming a partnership with another company, a collaborative approach can lead to a more prosperous long-term relationship. Compromising, sometimes, a middle ground solution is the best option. This style involves both parties giving up something to reach an agreement. Example, you and your business partner compromise on the division of profits to maintain a harmonious partnership. Avoiding, in some cases, it's best to avoid the negotiation altogether, especially if it's not essential or if emotions are running too high. Example, if a minor disagreement arises within your team, you might choose to avoid a formal negotiation and address the issue informally. Negotiation Strategies Now, let's talk about negotiation strategies, which are like roadmaps to guide you through the negotiation process. Here are a few important ones. Anchoring, this strategy involves starting the negotiation with a strong position or offer, which can influence the final outcome. Example, when selling a product, you might set a higher initial price, allowing room for negotiation while still achieving your desired price. Mirroring, mirroring is a communication technique where you reflect the language and behavior of the other party to build rapport and trust. Example, if your negotiation counterpart speaks slowly and calmly, you might adopt a similar speaking style to create a sense of connection. Silence, sometimes, silence can be a powerful negotiating tool. By staying silent, you encourage the other party to make concessions or reveal more information. Example, when discussing a job offer, you might pause after receiving the initial salary offer to see if the employer sweetens the deal. Emotional control, keeping your emotions in check is crucial in negotiation. Emotional outbursts can cloud judgment and hinder progress. Example, even if you're frustrated with a difficult client, maintaining professionalism is key to reaching a resolution. Remember, the key to effective negotiation is flexibility. You should be able to adapt your style and strategy to the specific circumstances. In our upcoming episodes, we'll dive deeper into negotiation preparation, ethical considerations, and advanced strategies to help you become a master negotiator. So, stay tuned and keep honing your negotiation skills. Episode 3, Negotiation Preparation Welcome back to the MBA Business School Program channel. In our previous episodes, we've explored the fundamentals of negotiation and different negotiation styles and strategies. Today, we're going to focus on a critical aspect of successful negotiation, preparation. Why preparation matters. Imagine going into a negotiation without any preparation. It's like embarking on a journey without a map or a destination. Preparation is your roadmap to achieving your negotiation goals, and here's why it matters. Clarity, preparation helps you clarify your objectives, understand your priorities, and determine what you're willing to give and take. Confidence, being well-prepared boosts your confidence during the negotiation. You'll feel more in control and capable of handling unexpected twists. Information, gathering relevant information about the other party, their interests, and their potential BATNA, best alternative to a negotiated agreement, gives you a significant advantage. Now, let's delve into the key steps of negotiation preparation. Step 1. Define your objectives. Begin by clearly defining what you want to achieve through the negotiation. What are your goals? What would constitute a successful outcome for you? Be specific and realistic. Example, if you're negotiating a business contract, your objectives might include a specific price, delivery schedule, and payment terms. 
Step 2. Gather information. Information is power in negotiation. Research the other party, their interests, and their potential batna. The more you know, the better you can anticipate their moves and find common ground. Example, before negotiating with a supplier, research their competitors' offers and industry standards for pricing and quality. Step 3. Determine your BATNA. Knowing your BATNA is crucial. It's your plan B, the alternative you'll pursue if the negotiation doesn't yield a satisfactory outcome. Your BATNA sets a baseline for what you're willing to accept. Example, if you're negotiating a job offer, your BATNA might involve considering other job opportunities or staying in your current role. Step 4. Plan your strategy. Based on your objectives, information, and BATNA, develop a negotiation strategy. Decide on your initial offer, your walkaway point, reservation point, and potential concessions you can make. Example, in a real estate negotiation, your strategy might involve starting with a lower offer, prepared to increase it incrementally, and setting a maximum price you're willing to pay. Step 5. Practice your communication. Effective communication is key to successful negotiation. Practice conveying your points clearly and persuasively. Anticipate potential objections and prepare responses. Example, if you're negotiating a project timeline with a team member, practice explaining the benefits of your proposed timeline and how it aligns with project goals. Step 6. Plan for the unexpected. Finally, prepare for surprises and unexpected twists. Flexibility is essential in negotiation. Think about how you'll respond if the other party introduces new information or changes their stance. Example, in a contract negotiation, consider how you'll react if the other party proposes additional terms that weren't initially discussed. By following these preparation steps, you'll enter your negotiation with a clear plan, confidence, and the ability to adapt to changing circumstances. In our upcoming episodes, we'll explore more advanced negotiation techniques and delve into specific negotiation scenarios. So, stay tuned and keep honing your negotiation skills. Episode 4, Distributive Bargaining and Value Creation Welcome back to the MBA Business School Program channel. In our previous episodes, we've covered the fundamentals of negotiation and the importance of preparation. Now, we're going to delve into two crucial concepts in negotiation, distributive bargaining and value creation. Distributive bargaining Distributive bargaining is often referred to as win-lose negotiation. In this approach, each party tries to maximize their share of the available resources, which can create a competitive atmosphere. While distributive bargaining is common, it's essential to understand its limitations. Key Characteristics of Distributive Bargaining Fixed pie, parties perceive the negotiation as a fixed pie, meaning there's only a limited amount to be divided. Example, imagine negotiating a salary raise with your employer. You may feel that the company's budget is fixed, and any increase for you comes at the expense of other employees. Zero-sum game, in distributive bargaining, one party's gain is seen as the other party's loss. It's a zero-sum game where the total value remains constant. Example, if you negotiate a discount on a product, the seller may feel they've lost money equivalent to the amount you saved. Value Creation Value creation, on the other hand, is the essence of win-win negotiation. Instead of viewing the negotiation as a fixed pie, it focuses on expanding the pie to create more value for both parties. Key Characteristics of Value Creation Collaboration Parties work together to find creative solutions that benefit everyone. It's about thinking beyond traditional trade-offs. Example, when negotiating a business partnership, you explore opportunities for joint marketing efforts that can increase both companies' revenue. Mutual gain, in value creation, both parties can achieve more than they initially expected. It's about seeking opportunities for mutual benefit. 
Example, in a negotiation with a supplier, you discover that by adjusting delivery schedules, you can reduce their shipping costs while ensuring timely supply for your business. The challenge. The challenge in negotiation often lies in moving from a distributive mindset to one focused on value creation. It requires creativity, active listening, and a willingness to explore different options. Strategies for value creation. Ask questions. Encourage open communication by asking questions that uncover the other party's interests and priorities. Example, in a contract negotiation, ask the client what specific outcomes they hope to achieve beyond the basic terms. Brainstorm solutions. Collaboratively brainstorm various solutions that could meet both parties' needs. Example, when negotiating a project timeline with a team member, explore different ways to meet project goals while accommodating their scheduling concerns. Trade-offs, be willing to make trade-offs that maximize overall value, even if it means conceding on certain points. Example, in a negotiation with a vendor, you might agree to a slightly higher price in exchange for faster delivery, benefiting both parties. By understanding distributive bargaining and value creation, you can adapt your negotiation approach to different situations. While distributive bargaining has its place, value creation is often the path to building strong, long-term relationships and achieving sustainable success. In our upcoming episodes, we'll explore more negotiation techniques and scenarios, so stay tuned and keep honing your negotiation skills. Episode 5, Integrative Negotiation and Win-Win Solutions Welcome back to the MBA Business School Program channel. In our previous episodes, we discussed distributive bargaining and value creation. Today, we're diving into integrative negotiation, which is all about finding win-win solutions that benefit all parties involved. What is integrative negotiation? Integrative negotiation, often referred to as win-win negotiation, is a collaborative approach where parties work together to maximize value and create solutions that address everyone's interests. This method focuses on expanding the pie, rather than just dividing it. Key Principles of Integrative Negotiation Interest-based, integrative negotiation places a strong emphasis on identifying and addressing the underlying interests and needs of each party. This goes beyond positions and focuses on why each party wants what they want. Example, in a negotiation for office space, your interest may be a quiet work environment, while the landlord's interest may be a stable, long-term tenant. Creative Problem Solving Parties engage in creative brainstorming to generate multiple options that could satisfy everyone's interests. Example, when negotiating a partnership agreement, you might explore various revenue-sharing models and marketing strategies that benefit both companies. Open communication, effective communication is crucial in integrative negotiation. Parties need to be transparent about their interests and priorities to find common ground. Example, when negotiating with a potential business collaborator, openly share your goals, concerns, and constraints to build trust. Steps in Integrative Negotiation Identify interests. Start by identifying your own interests and those of the other party. Ask probing questions to uncover their underlying needs. Generate options. Brainstorm potential solutions that address both parties' interests. Encourage creativity and be open to unconventional ideas. Evaluate and select solutions. Evaluate the proposed solutions based on their potential to satisfy both parties' interests. Choose the option that creates the most value for everyone. Negotiate and implement. Engage in negotiations to refine the chosen solution and work out the details. Once an agreement is reached, implement it. The win-win mindset. One of the fundamental aspects of integrative negotiation is adopting a win-win mindset. This means believing that there are solutions where all parties can benefit. It also involves empathy and a willingness to understand and address the other party's concerns. Benefits of Integrative Negotiation Stronger relationships, collaborative negotiations often lead to stronger, trust-based relationships, which can be invaluable in the long run. 
Sustainable agreements, win-win solutions tend to result in more sustainable agreements because they address the underlying interests of both parties. Innovation, integrative negotiation encourages creative problem-solving and can lead to innovative solutions that wouldn't have been considered in a competitive negotiation. Enhanced reputation, being known as a negotiator who seeks win-win solutions can enhance your reputation in the business world. In our next episodes, we'll explore multi-party negotiations, cross-cultural negotiations, and ethical considerations in negotiation, all with the goal of equipping you with the skills needed to succeed in diverse negotiation scenarios. So, stay tuned and keep honing your negotiation skills. Episode 6, Multi-Party Negotiations Welcome back to the MBA Business School Program channel. In our previous episodes, we've covered various aspects of negotiation, including distributive bargaining, value creation, and integrative negotiation. Today, we're stepping into the complex world of multi-party negotiations. Multi-party negotiations, an overview. Multi-party negotiations involve more than two parties with potentially conflicting interests. These negotiations can be particularly challenging due to the increased complexity of managing multiple relationships and aligning interests. Key Challenges in Multi-Party Negotiations Coordination Coordinating the interests and preferences of multiple parties can be like juggling many balls at once. Each party may have different priorities and concerns. Example, imagine a merger negotiation involving two companies and multiple shareholders. Ensuring that all parties agree on the terms can be complex. Coalitions, parties may form coalitions or alliances to gain strength in the negotiation. This can create shifting power dynamics and alliances that affect the outcome. Example, in a labor union negotiation, individual workers may form alliances with colleagues to present a unified front to management. Information flow, managing the flow of information among multiple parties can be challenging. Transparency and trust are critical. Example, when negotiating a joint venture involving several partners, ensuring that all partners have access to relevant information can be tricky. Strategies for Success in Multi-Party Negotiations Clear Objectives Ensure that each party understands its objectives and priorities. Clarity Helps in Aligning Interests Open Communication Foster open and transparent communication among all parties. Encourage sharing of information and concerns. Mediation, consider involving a neutral mediator or facilitator to help manage the negotiation process and keep it on track. Alliance building, be strategic about forming alliances or partnerships with other parties when it makes sense to do so. Contingency planning, develop contingency plans for various scenarios. This can help manage unexpected developments. Conflict resolution, have a process in place for resolving conflicts that may arise between parties during the negotiation. Real-world example, the Paris Climate Agreement. A notable example of a multi-party negotiation is the Paris Climate Agreement. This international accord involved 196 parties, each with its own interests and goals related to addressing climate change. Negotiators had to balance the need for ambitious climate action with the unique circumstances of each nation. The Paris Agreement ultimately succeeded due to extensive negotiation, diplomacy, and the flexibility to accommodate diverse interests. It serves as an example of how multi-party negotiations can lead to global agreements with far-reaching implications. In our upcoming episodes, we'll continue exploring various facets of negotiation, including cross-cultural negotiations, ethical considerations, and negotiation in specific contexts. Our goal is to equip you with the skills and knowledge to navigate the complexities of negotiation in diverse scenarios. So, stay tuned and keep honing your negotiation skills. Episode 7, Cross-Cultural Negotiations Welcome back to the MBA Business School Program channel. In our previous episodes, we've covered a wide range of negotiation topics, including multi-party negotiations. 
Today, we're delving into the fascinating world of cross-cultural negotiations. The Challenge of Cross-Cultural Negotiations Cross-cultural negotiations occur when individuals or organizations from different cultural backgrounds come together to negotiate. These negotiations can be exciting and rewarding, but they also present unique challenges. Key Challenges in Cross-Cultural Negotiations Communication barriers, differences in language, communication styles, and nonverbal cues can lead to misunderstandings. Example, in some cultures, direct communication is preferred, while in others, indirect or nuanced communication is the norm. Cultural norms, different cultures have varying norms and values, affecting negotiation strategies, behaviors, and priorities. Example, in some cultures, building a personal relationship before discussing business is essential, while in others, getting straight to the point is preferred. Trust building, building trust can be more time-consuming in cross-cultural negotiations, as it often involves understanding cultural nuances and demonstrating respect. Example, in some cultures, trust is established through the exchange of gifts, while in others, it's built through shared experiences. Strategies for Success in Cross-Cultural Negotiations Cultural Research Invest time in researching and understanding the culture of the party you're negotiating with. This includes language, customs, and business etiquette. Adaptability Be adaptable and open-minded. Be willing to adjust your negotiation style and expectations to accommodate cultural differences. Effective Communication Pay attention to your communication style and be clear and concise. Avoid slang, idioms, or language that may not translate well. Active listening. Practice active listening to ensure you understand the other party's perspective and concerns. Patience. Cross-cultural negotiations may take longer than you expect. Be patient and allow time for relationship building. Real-world example. International Business Negotiations When conducting international business negotiations, understanding and respecting cultural differences is crucial. For instance, a negotiation between a Japanese and an American company may involve Japanese culture, emphasis on harmony and consensus, indirect communication, and respect for hierarchy. American culture, direct communication, focus on individualism, and a desire for quick results. Successful cross-cultural negotiation in this context might involve a balance between the American desire for efficiency and the Japanese emphasis on relationship building and consensus. By embracing cultural diversity and practicing cultural intelligence, negotiators can turn the challenges of cross-cultural negotiations into opportunities for building stronger relationships and achieving mutually beneficial outcomes. In our upcoming episodes, we'll continue exploring various facets of negotiation, including ethical considerations, negotiation in specific contexts, and advanced negotiation skills. So, stay tuned and keep honing your negotiation skills, including your ability to navigate diverse cultural landscapes. Episode 8 Ethical Considerations in Negotiation Welcome back to the MBA Business School Program channel. In our previous episodes, we've explored the art and science of negotiation, from the basics to multi-party and cross-cultural negotiations. Today, we're diving into a critical aspect of negotiation, ethics. Why ethics matter in negotiation? Negotiation is not just about achieving your goals, it's also about doing so ethically and with integrity. Ethical considerations are vital because they shape the reputation of individuals and organizations and impact the long-term success of relationships. Key Ethical Considerations in Negotiation Honesty and truthfulness, always strive to be honest and truthful in your communication. Misrepresentation or deception can damage trust and relationships. Example, in a negotiation, avoid inflating the value of a product or service to secure a better deal. Transparency, be transparent about your intentions, interests, and constraints. Concealing relevant information can lead to misunderstandings and conflict. 
Example, when negotiating a contract, disclose any potential conflicts of interest that could affect the deal. Fairness, negotiation should aim for fair outcomes where both parties feel they've been treated justly. Unfair tactics can lead to resentment and strained relationships. Example, in salary negotiations, base your offer on objective criteria, such as experience and market rates, rather than personal biases. Respect, show respect for the other party's interests, culture, and values. Disrespectful behavior can lead to breakdowns in negotiations. Example, avoid making derogatory comments about the other party's culture or background. Commitment to agreements, once an agreement is reached, honor your commitments and follow through on your promises. Failing to do so can damage your credibility. Example, if you agree to deliver a product by a certain date, ensure it's delivered as promised. Ethical Dilemmas in Negotiation Negotiators often encounter ethical dilemmas where they must balance their desire for a favorable outcome with ethical principles. Here are some common ethical dilemmas. Competitive tactics, is it ethical to use aggressive tactics to gain an advantage in negotiations? Disclosure of information, when and how much information should you disclose to the other party? Breaking promises, is it ever acceptable to break an agreement if circumstances change? Ethical standards across cultures, how do you navigate ethical differences when negotiating with individuals from diverse cultural backgrounds? Strategies for ethical negotiation Establish ethical guidelines, develop clear ethical guidelines for yourself and your organization to follow in negotiations. Consult with colleagues, seek advice from colleagues or mentors when facing ethical dilemmas in negotiations. Consider long-term impact, think about the long-term consequences of your actions. Ethical behavior contributes to reputation and trust. Focus on mutual benefit, remember that ethical negotiation is not about winning at all costs, but about achieving mutually beneficial outcomes. Ethical negotiation not only builds trust and enhances relationships, but also leads to more sustainable and successful agreements. In our upcoming episodes, we'll continue exploring various negotiation topics, including negotiation in specific contexts and advanced negotiation skills. So, stay tuned and keep honing your negotiation skills with ethics and integrity in mind. Episode 9, Negotiation Power and Influence Welcome to Chapter 9 of our MBA Business School program on negotiation. Today, we'll explore the critical topic of negotiation power and influence. Understanding Negotiation Power Negotiation power refers to the ability of a party to exert control, influence, or leverage over the negotiation process and its outcomes. Power dynamics play a significant role in shaping the course of negotiations. Key factors influencing negotiation power Information, the party with better information about the negotiation subject matter often has an advantage. Information can be in the form of market data, product knowledge, or even the other party's interests. Example, in a business deal, the party with market research indicating strong demand for their product has information power. Alternatives, BATNA Your best alternative to a negotiated agreement, BATNA, is your source of power. A strong BATNA gives you the confidence to walk away from a negotiation if the terms are unfavorable. Example, if you have a job offer from another company while negotiating a raise with your current employer, your BATNA is strong. Resources, financial resources, assets, or unique capabilities can enhance your negotiating power. Parties with more resources may have the ability to offer attractive deals or withstand prolonged negotiations. Example, a company with substantial financial reserves may have resource power during a merger negotiation. Position and authority, your role within your organization or your status in the negotiation can also impact your power. High-ranking executives or key decision-makers often have positional power. Example, the CEO of a company has significant positional power in negotiations. Influence tactics in negotiation. 
Influence tactics are strategies and techniques used to persuade or manipulate the other party to achieve desired outcomes. Understanding and using influence tactics effectively is essential in negotiation. Common influence tactics. Rational persuasion, using logical arguments and facts to convince the other party that your proposal is in their best interest. Example, presenting data on cost savings to persuade a client to choose your product. Emotional appeals, appealing to the other party's emotions, values, or feelings to gain their support. Example, sharing a heartwarming story about how your product improved someone's life. Coalition building, forming alliances or partnerships with others to gain support and influence the negotiation. Example, bringing in a respected colleague to endorse your proposal during a team meeting. Commitment and consistency, encouraging the other party to make small commitments that align with your goals, which can lead to larger commitments over time. Example, asking a supplier to agree to a trial order before discussing a long-term contract. Scarcity, highlighting the limited availability or exclusivity of your offer to create a sense of urgency. Example, mentioning that a special discount is available for a limited time. Balancing power and influence. Successful negotiators understand how to balance power and influence to achieve mutually beneficial outcomes. It's essential to recognize when to assert your power and when to use influence tactics to build rapport and reach agreements that satisfy both parties. In our upcoming episodes, we'll continue to explore advanced negotiation skills and specific negotiation scenarios. So, stay tuned and keep honing your negotiation expertise, including the nuanced dynamics of power and influence. Episode 10, Negotiating in Difficult Situations Welcome back to the MBA Business School Program channel. In our previous episodes, we've covered a wide range of negotiation topics, including ethics in negotiation. Today, we're going to tackle a challenging aspect of negotiation, how to negotiate effectively in difficult situations. Why negotiating in difficult situations matters. Difficult situations can arise in negotiations for various reasons, such as high stakes, emotional intensity, or conflicting interests. Successfully navigating these challenges requires specific strategies and skills. Key strategies for negotiating in difficult situations Maintain emotional control. In high-stress situations, it's crucial to keep your emotions in check. Emotional reactions can cloud judgment and hinder progress. Example, if you're negotiating a critical project deadline, remain calm and focused even if tensions rise. Active listening, practice active listening to understand the concerns and motivations of the other party. This helps build rapport and trust. Example, if you're negotiating a contract with a client who is upset, listen carefully to their grievances before responding. Seek common ground, identify areas of agreement or shared interests, even in the most challenging negotiations. This provides a foundation for finding solutions. Example, in a labor dispute, both labor and management may agree on the importance of maintaining a safe work environment. Problem solve collaboratively, instead of focusing on past issues or assigning blame, work together to find solutions to the current problem. Example, in a negotiation with a dissatisfied customer, concentrate on resolving their specific concerns rather than revisiting past disputes. Use a neutral mediator, in particularly contentious negotiations, consider bringing in a neutral mediator or facilitator to help guide the process and maintain objectivity. Example, in a divorce settlement, a mediator can help the parties navigate complex emotional issues and reach a fair agreement. Real-world example, labor union negotiations. Labor union negotiations often involve challenging circumstances. Workers and management may have conflicting interests, and emotions can run high. Let's look at how key strategies can be applied in this context. Direct communication, both sides, union representatives, and management need to engage in open and direct communication to understand each other's concerns and explore potential solutions. 
This can help reduce tensions and foster a more constructive dialogue. Establishing red lines, setting clear boundaries and expectations is essential. Unions may have specific demands related to wages, working conditions, or benefits, while management may have budget constraints. By defining these limits, negotiations can focus on finding common ground within those boundaries. Backchannel negotiations, in labor disputes, backchannel negotiations may involve discussions between union leaders and high-level management away from the formal negotiation table. These private talks can help bridge gaps and explore creative solutions without the pressure of public scrutiny. Mediation, in particularly contentious labor negotiations, a neutral mediator or arbitrator may be brought in to facilitate discussions and guide the parties toward a mutually agreeable resolution. Mediators can help maintain objectivity and find compromises that satisfy both sides. By applying these strategies and emphasizing collaboration over confrontation, labor union negotiations can often lead to agreements that benefit both workers and management, promoting labor harmony and productivity. Resilience and Adaptability In difficult negotiations, resilience and adaptability are crucial. Negotiators must be prepared for unexpected challenges and be willing to adjust their strategies as the situation evolves. In our upcoming episodes, we'll continue exploring various negotiation scenarios and advanced negotiation skills. So, stay tuned and keep honing your negotiation skills, especially for those challenging moments that test your abilities. Episode 11, Conflict Resolution and Mediation Welcome back to the MBA Business School Program channel. In our previous episode, we discussed negotiating in difficult situations. Today, we're going to focus on an essential skill related to negotiation, conflict resolution and mediation. Why Conflict Resolution Matters Conflict is a natural part of human interaction, and it often arises in the context of negotiations. Whether it's a disagreement with a colleague, a customer complaint, or a contract dispute, conflicts can disrupt relationships and hinder progress. Effective conflict resolution is crucial for maintaining positive working relationships and achieving mutually beneficial outcomes. Key Principles of Conflict Resolution Listen actively. When conflicts arise, start by actively listening to all parties involved. Understand their perspectives, concerns, and emotions. Listening demonstrates empathy and can defuse tension. Example, in a team project, two team members have conflicting ideas on the project's direction. Actively listen to both sides to understand their reasoning. Stay calm, it's essential to maintain your composure, even in emotionally charged situations. Stay calm and compose to prevent conflicts from escalating. Example, in a customer service role, if a customer becomes irate due to a service issue, respond with a calm and empathetic demeanor. Identify underlying issues, conflicts often have underlying causes beyond the apparent disagreement. Dig deeper to identify these root issues, as resolving them can prevent future conflicts. Example, in a workplace dispute over office space, the real issue might be a lack of clear guidelines for office allocation. Collaborative problem solving, encourage collaboration to find mutually acceptable solutions. Focus on common interests and shared goals. Example, in a contract dispute with a supplier, work together to find a solution that addresses both parties' needs, such as adjusting delivery schedules. The Role of Mediation Mediation is a structured process in which a neutral third party helps facilitate communication and negotiation between conflicting parties. Mediators assist in finding common ground, generating solutions, and guiding parties toward a resolution. Benefits of Mediation Neutral Perspective Mediators provide an impartial viewpoint, helping parties see the issues from an objective standpoint. Improved communication, mediation encourages open and constructive communication, often leading to better understanding and resolution. Faster resolution, mediation can be a quicker and less adversarial method of resolving conflicts compared to legal proceedings. 
Preserves relationships, mediation aims to preserve relationships by finding win-win solutions that satisfy all parties. Real-world example, workplace conflict resolution. In a workplace, conflicts can arise among employees, between employees and managers, or even within project teams. Suppose two team members have conflicting work styles that are affecting their collaboration. A mediator could Facilitate a discussion where each team member expresses their concerns and preferences. Help them identify areas of overlap in their work styles and shared goals. Encourage them to explore ways to adjust their approaches to enhance teamwork. Through mediation, the team members can develop a better understanding of each other's working styles and create a plan for improved collaboration. Effective conflict resolution, whether through direct communication or mediation, is a valuable skill in negotiation and in maintaining harmonious relationships in various settings. In our upcoming episodes, we'll continue exploring advanced negotiation techniques and specific negotiation scenarios. So, stay tuned and keep honing your negotiation and conflict resolution skills. Episode 12, Negotiation in Business Transactions Welcome back to the MBA Business School Program channel. In our previous episodes, we've covered a wide range of negotiation topics, including conflict resolution and mediation. Today, we're shifting our focus to a specific context, negotiation in business transactions. Why negotiation in business transactions matters. Business transactions are at the core of any organization's operations. Whether it's acquiring a new supplier, finalizing a merger, or closing a significant deal, effective negotiation skills are essential to secure favorable terms and achieve strategic goals. Key Considerations in Business Transaction Negotiations Define your objectives. Before entering any negotiation, it's crucial to have a clear understanding of your objectives and what you hope to achieve through the transaction. Example, if you're negotiating a merger, your objectives may include expanding market reach and increasing profitability. Know your value proposition, understand your organization's strengths and unique value proposition. This knowledge can be a powerful tool in negotiation. Example, when negotiating a distribution agreement, highlight your company's exceptional product quality and marketing reach. Conduct due diligence. Gather as much information as possible about the other party, including their financial health, reputation, and past performance in similar transactions. Example, in a vendor negotiation, research the supplier's track record for on-time deliveries and quality control. Prepare for trade-offs, recognize that negotiations often involve trade-offs. Be prepared to make concessions in some areas to achieve your primary objectives. Example, when negotiating a contract, you might concede on pricing in exchange for more favorable payment terms. Effective Techniques in Business Transaction Negotiations BATNA, Best Alternative to a Negotiated Agreement Understand your BATNA, which is the best alternative you can pursue if negotiations fail. It provides a clear benchmark for evaluating proposed deals. Example, if you can't reach a favorable agreement with one supplier, your BATNA might be to explore alternative suppliers. Anchor pricing, use the anchoring technique by making the first offer or setting an initial price. This can influence the other party's perception of a fair deal. Example, when selling a product, start negotiations with a price slightly higher than your desired outcome. Building rapport, establishing a positive and professional relationship with the other party can lead to more productive negotiations. Example, begin negotiations with friendly small talk to create a comfortable atmosphere. Silence and active listening, sometimes, silence can be a powerful negotiation tactic. Allow the other party time to speak and consider your proposals. Example, after presenting your terms, remain silent to encourage the other party to share their thoughts first. Real-world example, acquisition negotiation. Imagine your company is negotiating the acquisition of a smaller competitor. In this complex business transaction, 
Define your objectives, which might include gaining access to the competitor's customer base and acquiring their technology assets. Conduct thorough due diligence to assess the competitor's financial health and the potential benefits of the acquisition. Use the anchoring technique to propose an initial purchase price while knowing your BATNA, which could involve pursuing other growth strategies if the deal falls through. Successful negotiation in business transactions often hinges on a combination of effective preparation, clear objectives, and skillful techniques. In our upcoming episodes, we'll explore negotiation in various other contexts and continue to build your negotiation skill set. So, stay tuned and keep refining your negotiation skills for success in the business world. Episode 13, Negotiation in Labor Relations Welcome back to the MBA Business School Program channel. In our previous episode, we explored negotiation in business transactions. Today, we'll shift our focus to a specialized area of negotiation, labor relations. Why Negotiation in Labor Relations Matters Labor relations negotiation plays a pivotal role in maintaining harmony between employers and employees. Whether it involves negotiating labor contracts, resolving disputes, or addressing workplace issues, effective negotiation in this context is essential for creating a productive and fair work environment. Key Aspects of Negotiation in Labor Relations Collective Bargaining Collective bargaining is the process by which labor unions and employers negotiate employment terms and conditions. It often involves negotiations over wages, working hours, benefits, and workplace policies. Example, in a collective bargaining session, a union representing factory workers might negotiate for higher wages and improved safety measures. Mediation and arbitration, when labor disputes arise, mediators or arbitrators may be brought in to help resolve issues. Mediators facilitate discussions, while arbitrators make binding decisions. Example, in a dispute over employee dismissals, an arbitrator may hear both sides and issue a final ruling. Workplace conflict resolution, effective negotiation skills are crucial for resolving conflicts between individual employees, teams, or between employees and their supervisors. Example, if two employees have a conflict over work responsibilities, HR professionals may use negotiation techniques to help them reach a resolution. Strategies for Successful Negotiation in Labor Relations Understanding Labor Laws Familiarize yourself with labor laws and regulations in your jurisdiction, as they often set the framework for negotiations. Example, in the United States, the National Labor Relations Act governs many aspects of labor relations. Open communication, foster open and transparent communication with both labor unions and employees. Keep them informed about changes that may affect their work conditions. Example, before implementing changes in workplace policies, hold discussions with union representatives to address concerns. Fairness and equity, strive for fairness and equity in negotiations. Ensure that the terms and conditions being negotiated are reasonable and just for both parties. Example, when negotiating pay increases, consider factors like cost of living and industry standards. Real-world example, labor contract negotiations. Imagine you're an HR manager negotiating a labor contract with a union representing factory workers. Here's how effective negotiation strategies can be applied. Preparation, gather data on industry wage standards, company financials, and employee demands to prepare for negotiations. Open communication, Conduct regular meetings with union representatives to discuss proposed changes and address concerns. Conflict resolution, if disputes arise during negotiations, use mediation to facilitate discussions and find common ground. Fairness, strive for a balanced agreement that benefits both employees and the organization, addressing issues like wages, benefits, and working conditions. Negotiating labor relations requires a delicate balance between the interests of labor and management. Successful negotiations can lead to improved workplace satisfaction, productivity, and long-term labor peace. In our upcoming episodes, 
We'll explore negotiation in various other contexts and continue to build your negotiation skill set. So, stay tuned and keep refining your negotiation skills for success in labor relations and beyond. Episode 14, Negotiation in Real Estate Transactions Welcome back to the MBA Business School Program channel. In our previous episode, we explored negotiation in labor relations. Today, we'll shift our focus to another specialized area of negotiation, real estate transactions. Why Negotiation in Real Estate Transactions Matters Real estate transactions are significant financial and personal decisions for buyers, sellers, and investors. Effective negotiation skills are crucial in this context to secure favorable deals, whether you're buying a home, selling a property, or negotiating a commercial real estate investment. Key Aspects of Negotiation in Real Estate Transactions Property Purchase and Sale Negotiating the terms of buying or selling a property is the core of real estate negotiation. This includes price, closing date, contingencies, and property repairs. Example, when purchasing a home, you may negotiate with the seller on the final sale price, the inclusion of appliances, and the timeline for closing. Lease agreements, in commercial real estate, negotiating lease agreements is common. This involves determining rent, lease duration, tenant improvements, and lease terms. Example, a business owner negotiating a lease for a retail space may discuss rent, lease length, and any required renovations or upgrades. Investment deals, real estate investors negotiate deals to acquire income-generating properties, such as rental apartments or commercial buildings. Negotiations involve the purchase price, financing terms, and potential income. Example, an investor negotiating the purchase of an apartment building may discuss the price, financing options, and the current rental income. Strategies for Successful Real Estate Negotiation Market research, understand the local real estate market and property values to make informed decisions during negotiations. Example, when selling a property, research recent sales of similar properties in your area to determine a competitive listing price. Clearly define your goals. Before entering negotiations, identify your priorities and non-negotiables, such as price limits or specific property features. Example, if you're a buyer, decide in advance the maximum price you're willing to pay for a property. Inspection and due diligence, conduct thorough property inspections and due diligence to identify any issues that may affect negotiations. Example, during a home inspection, if you discover structural problems, negotiate with the seller to either address the issues or adjust the purchase price accordingly. Negotiate contingencies. Include contingencies in your negotiation, such as inspection contingencies, financing contingencies, or appraisal contingencies, to protect your interests. Example, in a contract, specify that the sale is contingent on a satisfactory home inspection report. Real-world example, home purchase negotiation. Imagine you're a first-time homebuyer negotiating the purchase of a house. Here's how effective negotiation strategies can be applied. Market research, you've researched similar homes in the area to determine a fair price for the property you're interested in. Clearly define goals, you've set a maximum budget for the purchase and have a clear understanding of your must-have features. Inspection and due diligence, after a thorough home inspection, you discovered some necessary repairs. You negotiate with the seller to either make the repairs or lower the selling price to cover the cost of repairs. Successful real estate negotiation can lead to a satisfactory deal and a smooth transaction, whether you're buying, selling, or investing in properties. In our upcoming episodes, we'll explore negotiation in various other contexts and continue to build your negotiation skill set. So, stay tuned and keep refining your negotiation skills for success in real estate transactions and beyond. Episode 15, Negotiation and Dispute Resolution in International Business Welcome back to the MBA Business School Program channel. In our previous episode, we explored negotiation in real estate transactions. 
Today, we're expanding our horizons to the world of international business, where negotiation and dispute resolution play critical roles. Why Negotiation in International Business Matters In today's global economy, businesses frequently engage in international transactions. Whether it's forming partnerships, trading goods and services, or navigating cross-border disputes, effective negotiation skills are essential for success in the international arena. Key Aspects of Negotiation in International Business International trade agreements, negotiating trade agreements between countries or organizations involves complex discussions about tariffs, quotas, trade barriers, and market access. Example, representatives from two countries negotiate the terms of a free trade agreement to boost economic cooperation. Cross-cultural negotiations, international business negotiations often involve parties from different cultural backgrounds, adding layers of complexity to communication and understanding. Example, negotiating a joint venture between a Japanese and a French company requires an understanding of both cultures' negotiation styles. Dispute resolution, in international business, disputes can arise over contractual issues, intellectual property, or regulatory compliance. Effective dispute resolution is essential to avoid costly legal battles. Example, resolving a contractual dispute between a U.S. and a Chinese company may involve mediation or international arbitration. Strategies for Successful Negotiation in International Business Cultural Sensitivity Understand and respect the cultural norms and values of the parties involved. This includes communication styles, negotiation approaches, and etiquette. Example, when negotiating with a Middle Eastern business partner, be aware of the importance of building personal relationships and showing patience. Legal Framework Familiarize yourself with international trade laws, treaties, and regulations that govern your industry and the countries involved. Example, in international shipping negotiations, adhere to the United Nations Convention on Contracts for the International Sale of Goods, CISG. Effective communication, use clear and concise language to convey your message, and consider using professional interpreters if necessary. Example, when discussing technical specifications in a negotiation, ensure that all parties fully understand the terms. Dispute resolution mechanisms, include dispute resolution clauses in contracts that outline agreed-upon methods for resolving conflicts, such as arbitration or mediation. Example, in a contract with a foreign supplier, specify that any disputes will be resolved through international arbitration in a neutral jurisdiction. Real-world example, international trade negotiations. Imagine you're a negotiator representing your country in trade negotiations with another nation. Here's how you can apply effective negotiation strategies. Cultural sensitivity. Before the negotiations, research and understand the cultural norms, communication styles, and negotiation practices of your counterparts. Legal framework. Be well-versed in international trade laws and agreements that impact the negotiations. Effective communication. Ensure that interpreters are available if there are language barriers. Dispute resolution mechanisms. Include a dispute resolution clause in the trade agreement to handle potential disputes through a predefined process, such as international arbitration. Successful negotiation in international business requires a deep understanding of cultural nuances, legal frameworks, and effective communication practices. In our upcoming episodes, we'll explore negotiation in various other contexts and continue to build your negotiation skill set. So, stay tuned and keep refining your negotiation skills for success in the international business arena and beyond. Episode 16, Negotiation Simulation Welcome back to the MBA Business School Program channel. In our previous episode, we explored negotiation in international business. Today, we're going to take a different approach and engage in a negotiation simulation. Why Negotiation Simulations Are Valuable Negotiation simulations are practical exercises that allow you to apply and test your negotiation skills in a controlled environment. 
They provide an opportunity to practice and refine your techniques, learn from your experiences, and gain confidence in your abilities. Simulating a business negotiation. Let's walk through a simplified negotiation scenario. Scenario, you are a procurement manager for a company looking to purchase raw materials from a supplier. The supplier has quoted a price that is higher than your budget allows. Your goals. Negotiate a lower price for the raw materials without compromising quality. Establish a long-term relationship with the supplier for future orders. Key steps in the negotiation simulation. Preparation. Before the negotiation, gather information about the supplier's costs, market conditions, and any alternative suppliers. Determine your negotiation strategy and your walkaway price, the highest price you're willing to accept. Opening statement. Begin the negotiation with a clear and concise opening statement. Express your interest in a long-term partnership while highlighting your budget constraints. Listening and information gathering, allow the supplier to respond. Listen carefully to their perspective, concerns, and any potential areas for compromise. Ask probing questions to gather additional information. Offer and counteroffer, present your initial offer for the raw materials, which should reflect your budget limitations. Be prepared to make concessions, but ensure they align with your overall objectives. Building rapport, maintain a professional and positive demeanor throughout the negotiation. Building rapport can help create a collaborative atmosphere. Closing the deal, once you've reached an agreement, summarize the key points and ensure both parties are clear on the terms. If necessary, draft a written agreement to formalize the deal. Reflect and learn, after the simulation, reflect on your negotiation performance. What strategies were effective, and what could be improved? Consider how the experience can inform your real-world negotiations. Benefits of Negotiation Simulations Skill Development Simulations provide a safe environment to practice negotiation techniques. Confidence Building Success in simulations can boost your confidence when negotiating in real situations. Immediate feedback. Receive feedback from instructors or peers to identify strengths and areas for improvement. Real-world application. The skills developed in simulations can be applied to actual business negotiations. Conclusion. Negotiation simulations are valuable tools for honing your negotiation skills. Whether you're negotiating in the business world, in international contexts, or in personal interactions, practice is key to becoming a more effective negotiator. In our upcoming episodes, we'll continue to explore advanced negotiation skills and specific negotiation scenarios. So, stay tuned and keep refining your negotiation skills through both theory and practice. Episode 17, Negotiation Communication Skills Welcome back to the MBA Business School Program channel. In our previous episode, we engaged in a negotiation simulation to apply and practice our negotiation skills. Today, we're delving into an essential aspect of negotiation, communication skills. Why communication skills are crucial in negotiation. Effective communication is at the heart of successful negotiations. How you express your ideas, listen to others, and convey your message can significantly impact the outcome of a negotiation. Let's explore key communication skills to enhance your negotiation prowess. 1. Active listening. Active listening involves fully focusing on the speaker, understanding their perspective, and showing empathy. In negotiations, this skill is paramount because it helps you gather information. By listening actively, you can uncover the other party's needs, concerns, and priorities. Build rapport, showing that you value the other party's viewpoint fosters trust and goodwill. Identify opportunities, active listening enables you to identify areas of common ground and potential win-win solutions. Example, if you're negotiating a partnership with another company, actively listen to their goals and challenges to identify areas of alignment. 2. Effective Verbal Communication 
Your words and how you express them can shape the negotiation's tone and direction. Effective verbal communication involves Clarity, use clear and concise language to articulate your proposals and ideas. Positivity, maintain a positive and professional tone throughout the negotiation. Empathy, show understanding and empathy for the other party's position, even if you disagree. Example, when discussing pricing with a client, express your willingness to find a solution that meets their budget while maintaining quality. 3. Nonverbal Communication Nonverbal cues, such as body language, facial expressions, and gestures, can convey information and emotions. Pay attention to Eye contact, maintain appropriate eye contact to convey confidence and attentiveness. Gestures, use gestures to emphasize points and convey engagement. Body language, maintain an open and relaxed posture to appear approachable and receptive. Example, during a negotiation, avoid crossing your arms, as it may be interpreted as defensiveness. 4. Emotional Intelligence Emotional Intelligence, EI, is the ability to understand and manage your emotions and the emotions of others. EI in negotiation involves Self-awareness, recognize your own emotions and how they may impact your negotiation style. Empathy, understand the emotions of the other party and respond with sensitivity. Emotional regulation, manage your emotions effectively, especially in high-stress situations. Example, if you sense frustration from the other party, acknowledge their feelings and suggest a short break to cool off if needed. 5. Summarizing and Clarifying Throughout the negotiation, summarize key points and seek clarification when necessary. This ensures that both parties have a clear understanding of the discussion. Example, after discussing the terms of a contract, summarize the agreed-upon points and ask the other party if they have any clarifications or additions. Effective communication skills can help you navigate negotiations more successfully, build better relationships, and reach mutually beneficial agreements. In our upcoming episodes, we'll continue to explore advanced negotiation skills and specific negotiation scenarios. So, stay tuned and keep honing your negotiation skills, especially in the realm of communication. Episode 18, Negotiation Case Studies Welcome back to the MBA Business School Program channel. In our previous episode, we focused on negotiation communication skills. Today, we'll dive into real-world negotiation scenarios by examining negotiation case studies. These case studies provide practical insights into effective negotiation strategies and tactics. Why study negotiation case studies? Analyzing negotiation case studies allows us to learn from the successes and challenges of others. By exploring real situations, we can gain valuable insights and apply lessons to our own negotiation endeavors. Case Study 1, The Disney Pixar Merger Background, in 2006, the Walt Disney Company acquired Pixar Animation Studios. Pixar's impressive track record of creating hit animated films, such as Toy Story and Finding Nemo, made it a highly sought-after acquisition target. Key Lessons Valuing intellectual property, Disney recognized the value of Pixar's intellectual property, IP, and negotiated a deal that protected and enhanced the creative potential of Pixar's talent. Collaboration and Integration Post-acquisition, Disney and Pixar successfully integrated their creative teams, leading to continued blockbuster success. Collaboration was a critical aspect of the negotiation and post-merger strategy. Case Study 2, Microsoft's Acquisition of LinkedIn Background, in 2016, Microsoft acquired LinkedIn, the professional networking platform, for approximately $26.2 billion. Key Lessons Strategic Vision, Microsoft's strategic vision for the acquisition was to integrate LinkedIn's professional network with its own suite of productivity tools. Having a clear vision in negotiations is crucial. Data security and privacy, LinkedIn held vast amounts of user data, making data security and privacy a top priority in negotiations. 
Ensuring data protection was a critical aspect of the deal. Case Study 3, Labor Union Negotiations at Ford Background, in 2009, during the global financial crisis, Ford faced significant financial challenges. Negotiations with the United Auto Workers, UAW, Union were vital to the company's survival. Key Lessons Transparency Ford's management communicated openly about the company's financial situation, emphasizing the need for cost reductions and concessions from the union. Shared Sacrifice Both Ford management and the UAW recognized the importance of shared sacrifice to save jobs and the company. The negotiated agreement included wage freezes and reduced benefits. Case Study 4 The Iran Nuclear Deal Background The Iran Nuclear Deal formerly known as the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, JCPOA, was negotiated in 2015. It aimed to curb Iran's nuclear program in exchange for sanctions relief. Key Lessons Diplomacy and Multilateral Negotiations The JCPOA involved multiple parties, including the United States, Iran, and several European countries. Multilateral negotiations required diplomacy, compromise, and coordination. Verification and compliance, ensuring robust mechanisms for verifying compliance was a critical aspect of the negotiations. Detailed protocols and inspections were established to monitor Iran's nuclear activities. By studying these negotiation case studies, we can gain insights into various negotiation strategies, the importance of clear objectives, the value of collaboration, and the need for adaptability in different negotiation contexts. These real-world examples provide valuable lessons for negotiators in both business and international affairs. In our upcoming episodes, we'll continue to explore advanced negotiation skills and specific negotiation scenarios. So, stay tuned and keep honing your negotiation skills through the power of case studies. Episode 19, Power Imbalance and Negotiation Strategies Welcome back to the MBA Business School Program channel. In our previous episode, we delved into negotiation case studies, learning valuable lessons from real-world scenarios. Today, we're going to address a common challenge in negotiation, dealing with power imbalances and the strategies to navigate them effectively. Understanding Power Imbalance in Negotiation Power imbalances occur when one party holds more leverage, resources, or influence than the other. This can stem from various factors, such as market dominance, financial strength, or expertise. Recognizing and managing power disparities is crucial for achieving fair and productive negotiations. Key Strategies for Negotiating in Power Imbalanced Situations Preparation is key. In power imbalance negotiations, thorough preparation is your best ally. Gather as much information as possible about the other party's strengths, weaknesses, and objectives. Example, if you're negotiating with a larger corporation, research their recent financial reports, market share, and recent business developments. Leverage your unique value, even in situations where you hold less power, emphasize your unique strengths and value proposition. Highlight what sets you apart and why the other party should consider your offer. Example, when pitching your startup to investors with more resources, emphasize your innovative technology or market disruption potential. Seek allies or partnerships, explore the possibility of forming alliances or partnerships with other parties that may bolster your negotiating position. Example, a small agricultural co-op may negotiate collectively with suppliers to increase their purchasing power. Use creative problem-solving, look for innovative solutions that can benefit both parties. Propose options that address the interests and concerns of the more powerful party. Example, when negotiating with a landlord for lower rent, offer a longer lease term or assume responsibility for certain maintenance tasks. Build trust and credibility, focus on building trust through transparency and reliability. Demonstrating integrity can level the playing field. Example, consistently delivering on promises and meeting deadlines can enhance your credibility in negotiations. Real-world example, small business supplier negotiations. 
Imagine you own a small business that supplies specialty coffee beans to a large coffee shop chain. The coffee shop chain is a dominant player in the market, giving them significant negotiating power. Here's how you can apply the strategies. Preparation, research the coffee shop chain's recent sales trends and market performance. Leverage your unique value, emphasize the exceptional quality and unique flavor profiles of your coffee beans. Seek allies or partnerships, consider forming partnerships with other small suppliers to collectively negotiate more favorable terms. Use creative problem solving, propose a mutually beneficial arrangement, such as offering exclusive rights to your beans in return for longer payment terms. Build trust and credibility, consistently deliver high-quality products and meet order deadlines to build trust with the coffee shop chain. By strategically approaching power imbalance negotiations, you can increase your chances of achieving favorable outcomes and maintaining long-term relationships with more powerful counterparts. In our upcoming episodes, we'll continue to explore advanced negotiation skills and specific negotiation scenarios. So, stay tuned and keep refining your negotiation skills, even when facing power imbalances. Episode 20, Legal Aspects of Negotiation Welcome back to the MBA Business School Program channel. In our previous episode, we discussed strategies for negotiating in situations with power imbalances. Today, we're delving into an essential aspect of negotiation that impacts various contexts, the legal aspects. Why understanding legal aspects in negotiation matters. Legal considerations play a significant role in many negotiations, from business contracts to international agreements. Being aware of the legal aspects ensures that negotiations are conducted within the boundaries of the law and that agreements are enforceable. Key Legal Aspects to Consider in Negotiation Contract Law Contracts are the foundation of many negotiations. Understanding contract law is essential for creating binding and enforceable agreements. Example, when negotiating a business partnership, ensure that the contract includes clear terms, conditions, and performance expectations. Regulatory Compliance In regulated industries, negotiations must align with legal and regulatory requirements. Failure to comply can lead to legal consequences. Example, negotiating in the pharmaceutical industry requires adherence to strict regulations regarding product safety and marketing. Intellectual property, IP, rights, negotiating IP-related matters, such as licensing agreements or technology transfers, requires a deep understanding of IP law to protect proprietary assets. Example, when negotiating a software licensing agreement, ensure that the terms protect your company's IP rights. Antitrust laws. Antitrust laws prevent anti-competitive behavior and monopolies. Negotiations that involve mergers, acquisitions, or pricing often require compliance with these laws. Example, when negotiating a merger, conduct a thorough antitrust analysis to ensure the deal doesn't raise concerns about market competition. Strategies for addressing legal aspects in negotiation. Consult legal experts. When negotiations involve complex legal matters, it's wise to seek guidance from legal experts or attorneys who specialize in the relevant area of law. Example, in international trade negotiations, consult with international trade attorneys to navigate complex customs regulations and international agreements. Document everything. Keep meticulous records of all negotiations, correspondence, and agreements. Written documentation is vital for legal protection and dispute resolution. Example, when negotiating a supply contract, maintain a comprehensive record of all communications, including emails, meeting minutes, and drafts of the contract. Include dispute resolution clauses. Contracts should include clauses outlining dispute resolution methods, such as arbitration or mediation, to address conflicts without resorting to litigation. Example, in a joint venture agreement, specify that any disputes between the partners will be resolved through arbitration in a specific jurisdiction. Stay informed, continuously educate yourself on the relevant laws and regulations impacting your negotiations. Laws can change, so it's crucial to stay updated. 
Example, if you're involved in negotiations involving consumer data, monitor changes in data privacy laws to ensure compliance. Real-world example, international trade agreement. Imagine you're negotiating a trade agreement between two countries. Here are some key legal aspects to consider. Trade regulations, ensure that the trade agreement complies with both countries' trade regulations and international trade agreements. Intellectual property protection, address IP protection in the agreement, outlining how each country will protect the other's IP rights. Dispute resolution, include a dispute resolution mechanism, specifying whether disputes will be resolved through arbitration or by a designated international body. By understanding and addressing legal aspects in negotiations, you can create agreements that are legally sound, minimize the risk of disputes, and ensure that both parties adhere to their obligations. In our upcoming episodes, we'll continue to explore advanced negotiation skills and specific negotiation scenarios. So, stay tuned and keep enhancing your negotiation expertise, including the crucial legal considerations. Episode 21, Emotional Intelligence in Negotiation Welcome back to the MBA Business School Program channel. In our previous episode, we covered the legal aspects of negotiation. Today, we're diving into a critical aspect of negotiation success, emotional intelligence. Why Emotional Intelligence Matters in Negotiation Emotional Intelligence EI, is the ability to recognize, understand, and manage emotions in yourself and others. In negotiation, EI is a powerful tool for building rapport, resolving conflicts, and achieving mutually beneficial outcomes. Key Elements of Emotional Intelligence in Negotiation Self-Awareness being in touch with your own emotions allows you to understand how they may influence your decision-making and communication during negotiations. Example, recognizing that you feel anxious about a high-stakes negotiation helps you manage your anxiety and stay focused. Empathy, understanding the emotions and perspectives of the other party is crucial for building rapport and trust. Example, empathizing with a client's frustration over a delayed project deadline can lead to a more constructive discussion. Emotional regulation, the ability to manage your own emotions, especially in high-pressure situations, can prevent impulsive reactions that could harm the negotiation process. Example, instead of reacting angrily to a provocative comment, emotionally regulating yourself allows you to respond calmly and professionally. Social skills, effective communication and relationship building skills are essential for negotiating with others successfully. Example, using active listening and open communication can help bridge gaps and foster collaboration. Strategies for applying emotional intelligence in negotiation. Active listening, pay close attention to the other party's verbal and nonverbal cues to understand their emotional state and perspective. Example, if the other party's tone becomes agitated during negotiations, actively listen to their concerns and acknowledge their emotions. Empathetic responses, show empathy by validating the other party's feelings and acknowledging their point of view, even if you don't agree. Example, if a team member expresses frustration about project delays, respond with empathy, saying, I understand this situation is challenging, and I share your concern. Stay calm and professional, maintain a calm and composed demeanor, even when faced with hostility or strong emotions from the other party. Example, in a high-stress negotiation, focus on your breathing and avoid reacting defensively to emotional outbursts. Conflict resolution, use your emotional intelligence to de-escalate conflicts and find mutually acceptable solutions. Example, when disagreements arise, suggest a break to allow both parties to cool off before returning to the negotiation table. Real-world example, salary negotiation. Imagine you're negotiating a salary increase with your employer. Applying emotional intelligence can help in the following ways. Self-awareness, recognize any nervousness or anxiety you may feel about the negotiation. Empathy, understand that your employer may have budget constraints or concerns about fairness. Emotional regulation, keep your emotions in check to maintain a professional and constructive dialogue. 
Social skills, use effective communication and negotiation techniques to express your value to the company while considering the employer's perspective. By applying emotional intelligence in this negotiation, you can increase the likelihood of a successful outcome and maintain a positive working relationship. In our upcoming episodes, we'll continue to explore advanced negotiation skills and specific negotiation scenarios. So, stay tuned and keep refining your negotiation expertise, including the invaluable skill of emotional intelligence. Episode 22, Gender and Negotiation Welcome back to the MBA Business School Program channel. In our previous episode, we explored the role of emotional intelligence in negotiation. Today, we're addressing an important topic, gender and negotiation. Why gender matters in negotiation Negotiation dynamics can be influenced by gender, with societal expectations and biases affecting how individuals perceive and engage in negotiations. It's crucial to understand these dynamics to promote fairness and equality in negotiation processes. Key Considerations for Gender and Negotiation Stereotypes Gender stereotypes can shape how negotiators are perceived. Men are sometimes seen as assertive, while women may be viewed as accommodating. These stereotypes can impact negotiation outcomes. Example, a male negotiator may be praised for his assertiveness, while a female negotiator displaying the same behavior may be labeled as aggressive. Negotiation style, men and women may exhibit different negotiation styles. Men may lean toward competitive approaches, while women may adopt more collaborative strategies. Example, a male negotiator might focus on winning concessions, while a female negotiator may emphasize finding mutually beneficial solutions. Advocacy, advocating for one's interests is a fundamental aspect of negotiation. Gender can influence how comfortable individuals feel advocating for themselves. Example, men may feel more encouraged to negotiate for a higher salary, while women may hesitate to do so. Strategies for Navigating Gender Dynamics in Negotiation Awareness, recognize the potential impact of gender biases and stereotypes on negotiation dynamics. Be mindful of your own biases and those of others. Example, if you notice that you have different expectations for male and female colleagues in negotiation, challenge and re-evaluate those assumptions. Focus on interests, emphasize the common interests and goals shared by all parties in the negotiation. This can help shift the focus away from gender-related assumptions. Example, in a team negotiation, highlight how achieving the project's success benefits everyone, regardless of gender. Promote inclusive practices, encourage inclusive negotiation environments that allow all participants to feel comfortable and respected. Example, in a leadership role, create an inclusive culture where diverse voices are heard and valued during negotiations. Real-world example, salary negotiation. Consider a salary negotiation scenario for a male and female employee. Both employees have similar qualifications and experience. Applying gender-aware strategies can help ensure fairness. Stereotype awareness. The employer should be conscious of potential biases that may lead to offering a higher initial salary to the male employee based on assertiveness stereotypes. Focus on interests, emphasize the organization's commitment to fair compensation practices and the importance of aligning salaries with qualifications and market standards. Inclusive practices, create a negotiation environment where both employees feel empowered to advocate for their compensation, ensuring equal opportunities for both. By addressing gender dynamics in negotiations, organizations can work toward achieving equitable outcomes and fostering a more inclusive workplace. In our upcoming episodes, we'll continue to explore advanced negotiation skills and specific negotiation scenarios. So, stay tuned and keep enhancing your negotiation expertise while promoting gender equality in the negotiation process. Episode 23 Negotiating in Competitive Markets Welcome back to the MBA Business School Program channel. In our previous episode, we discussed the impact of gender on negotiation. 
Today, we're exploring negotiation strategies in highly competitive markets. Why negotiating in competitive markets is challenging. Competitive markets are characterized by multiple players vying for limited resources or opportunities. Navigating negotiations in such environments requires skill, strategy, and adaptability. Key strategies for negotiating in competitive markets. Market research, thoroughly understand the competitive landscape, including the strengths and weaknesses of other players, market trends, and customer preferences. Example, before negotiating a distribution deal for your product, research the competitor's distribution strategies and pricing. Value proposition, clearly communicate your unique value proposition to differentiate yourself from competitors. Highlight what sets your product or service apart. Example, emphasize the superior quality or innovative features of your product when negotiating with potential customers. Pricing strategy, develop a pricing strategy that balances competitiveness with profitability. Consider dynamic pricing models based on market conditions. Example, in a competitive market, regularly review and adjust your pricing to remain competitive while maintaining profitability. Negotiation flexibility, be prepared to adapt your negotiation approach based on changing market dynamics and competitive pressures. Example, if a new competitor enters the market, adjust your negotiation strategy to address the changing landscape. Building relationships, even in competitive markets, building strong relationships with customers, suppliers, and partners can provide a competitive advantage. Example, cultivate long-term relationships with key clients to secure repeat business, even in a competitive market. Real-world example, tech startup in a competitive market. Imagine you're the founder of a tech startup in a highly competitive market. You're negotiating with potential investors for funding. Here's how you can apply the strategies. Market research, provide investors with a comprehensive analysis of market trends, the competitive landscape, and your unique technology. Value proposition, emphasize the innovative features and potential for market disruption that your technology offers. Pricing strategy, Present a pricing model that reflects both the value your technology provides and its competitive positioning. Negotiation flexibility. Be open to adjusting the terms of the investment based on the investor's feedback and market conditions. Building relationships. Build trust and rapport with potential investors by demonstrating your commitment and expertise in the industry. Negotiating in competitive markets can be intense but with the right strategies, you can secure favorable deals and thrive in challenging environments. In our upcoming episodes, we'll continue to explore advanced negotiation skills and specific negotiation scenarios. So, stay tuned and keep honing your negotiation expertise, especially in competitive markets. Episode 24, Ethics and Sustainability in Negotiation Welcome back to the MBA Business School Program channel. In our previous episode, we discussed negotiating in competitive markets. Today, we'll explore the crucial intersection of ethics and sustainability in negotiation. Why ethics and sustainability matter in negotiation? In today's global business landscape, ethical considerations and sustainability are integral to long-term success. Negotiators must navigate the ethical dimensions of their decisions and promote sustainable practices. Key Considerations for Ethics and Sustainability in Negotiation Transparency Maintain open and transparent communication with all parties involved in the negotiation. Honesty is essential for building trust. Example, when negotiating a supply contract, disclose information about your company's environmental initiatives and ethical sourcing practices. Fair treatment, ensure that all parties are treated fairly and with respect throughout the negotiation process. Avoid exploitative or unethical practices. Example, in labor negotiations, prioritize fair wages and working conditions for employees. Environmental impact, consider the environmental consequences of your negotiation decisions. Strive to minimize negative environmental impacts and promote sustainability. 
Example, when negotiating product packaging, explore eco-friendly materials and manufacturing processes. Long-term benefits, look beyond short-term gains and consider the long-term ethical and sustainability implications of your agreements. Example, when negotiating a partnership, assess how the collaboration aligns with both parties' sustainability goals. Strategies for integrating ethics and sustainability in negotiation. Ethical guidelines, establish clear ethical guidelines for your organization's negotiation practices. Ensure that all negotiators are aware of and adhere to these guidelines. Example, Develop a code of conduct that outlines ethical principles for all employees involved in negotiations. Sustainability assessment. Conduct sustainability assessments of your negotiation decisions. Consider the social and environmental impacts of your agreements. Example, evaluate the carbon footprint of transportation agreements and explore options for reducing emissions. Stakeholder engagement. Involve relevant stakeholders, such as environmental experts, community representatives, or ethics committees, in decision-making when negotiating agreements with significant ethical or sustainability implications. Example, when negotiating a real estate development project, engage with local communities to address their concerns and incorporate their feedback. Real-world example, sustainable supply chain negotiation. Imagine you're responsible for negotiating supply chain agreements for a consumer goods company. Here's how you can integrate ethics and sustainability. Transparency. Share information about your company's commitment to ethical sourcing and sustainable production processes with potential suppliers. Fair treatment. Negotiate fair pricing and terms with suppliers, ensuring that they provide safe working conditions and fair wages to their employees. Environmental impact, collaborate with suppliers to identify opportunities to reduce waste, energy consumption, and emissions throughout the supply chain. Long-term benefits, seek suppliers who share your commitment to sustainability and are willing to invest in long-term, environmentally responsible practices. By integrating ethics and sustainability into your supply chain negotiations, you can contribute to a more responsible and sustainable business ecosystem. In our upcoming episodes, we'll continue to explore advanced negotiation skills and specific negotiation scenarios. So, stay tuned and keep refining your negotiation expertise while prioritizing ethics and sustainability. Episode 25, Advanced Negotiation Strategies and Reflection Welcome back to the MBA Business School Program channel. In our previous episode, we explored the intersection of ethics and sustainability in negotiation. Today, we'll conclude our series with a look at advanced negotiation strategies and the importance of reflection in your negotiation journey. Advanced Negotiation Strategies Advanced negotiation requires a deep understanding of human psychology, strategy, and tactics. Here are some advanced strategies to elevate your negotiation skills. Anchoring, start with a strong initial offer or anchor. Research shows that the initial offer often influences the final agreement. Example, when selling a product, start by stating a higher price before negotiating to increase the perceived value of a lower counteroffer. BATNA, best alternative to a negotiated agreement, develop a strong BATNA, which is your alternative plan if negotiations fail. A robust BATNA increases your negotiating power. Example, when negotiating a job offer, having another job offer or career opportunity as your BATNA strengthens your position. The two-step process, begin with a collaborative, information-sharing phase before moving to the competitive negotiation phase. This approach can foster trust and lead to more creative solutions. Example, in a business partnership negotiation, first share your goals and values before discussing specific terms. Negotiating with multiple parties, in multi-party negotiations, build coalitions and alliances strategically to advance your interests. Example, in a merger negotiation involving multiple companies, form alliances with those that share similar objectives. The importance of reflection. Reflection is a critical component of ongoing improvement in negotiation skills. 
After each negotiation, take time to assess what went well, what could have been done differently, and what lessons you've learned. Questions for reflection. What were your objectives? Reflect on your initial goals for the negotiation. Did you achieve them? If not, why? What strategies did you employ? Evaluate the strategies and tactics you used during the negotiation. Were they effective? Did you encounter any unexpected challenges? How did you handle emotions? Consider how emotions, both yours and the other parties, influence the negotiation. Did emotional intelligence play a role in the outcome? What were the key takeaways? Identify the key lessons learned from the negotiation. What can you apply to future negotiations? Feedback and adaptation. Seek feedback from colleagues, mentors, or negotiation partners if possible. Use feedback to adapt and refine your negotiation approach. Real-world example. International trade negotiation. Imagine you're part of a team negotiating a complex international trade agreement. After the negotiation concludes, reflect on the experience. Objectives. Did you achieve your country's trade objectives? If not, what obstacles prevented success? Strategies. Which negotiation strategies were most effective in building consensus among multiple nations? Emotions. How did managing emotions, especially in high-pressure diplomatic negotiations, impact the outcome? Takeaways. What lessons can you apply to future international trade negotiations? What improvements can be made? By regularly reflecting on your negotiation experiences, you can continually refine your skills and become a more effective negotiator. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the world of negotiation. We hope these episodes have provided valuable insights and strategies to help you succeed in your negotiation endeavors. Remember that negotiation is not just a skill, it's a lifelong learning process. Keep practicing, reflecting, and refining your skills, and you'll continue to grow as a successful negotiator. If you have any more questions or topics you'd like us to explore, please feel free to let us know. We're here to help you on your business and negotiation journey.